teach kids how to learn, I think it's、yeah. the most important than teaching them what to learn. I think the actions speak a lot louder、mm-hmm. than the words. What does the ideal school or education look like? One of the things that I loved about my mom is. All right, everybody. So Christy Maju in the house.、Uh, she's she's an awesome member of Movement Makers. She's been with us now for over a year, and as part of that, we're doing an、uh, uh, an interview together. So she's going to interview me. She's had some questions on her mind, and are this is it. you Take it ready? Away, Christy, so yeah, I've just been. There's certain things that I meant to ask you from about your website, and, and you know your stories on your website, and and since the beginning. So like at the top, you say it's not your fault. Right, and so my first question is like you throughout school were you know struggled. You went through three different schools, had challenges, and you said is one of the things is like, it's not your fault. You know, society, you, you've been limited. People tell you what to do, what to be, be realistic. At what point do you think that adults start telling young people to? That you know, don't dream big anymore. It's not,、uh, you know, it, you know, be realistic type thing. A couple of the things that you had said on there, and why do you think that is? Yeah, what a, what a start.、Um, mm-hmm. And I know you do a lot of work with kids, so this is a great this is a great kind of theme into it.、Um, honestly, I think it's even before they say anything. I think if you ask a parent. Who's got a six-year-old or a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old, and and the kid wants to go and be a whatever? I think when they're really young, the parents are、mm-hmm. we're usually pretty encouraging, like yeah, you can go do anything you want, and it and it they have to take it more seriously once they're looking at university and college, like graduating high school, and like what courses you're going to pick. But I think even more than the words that people say is the actions that they're doing. And so, if you have a six-year-old at home and you're you're teaching her to go and and do whatever you want and be, you could be X Y Z, but then you're not living it yourself. I think the actions speak a lot louder、mm-hmm. than the words. And so,、uh, a lot of parents, I think, are not off. Just most people, most people are not living the life that they want. Most people are not chasing down. They've got goals. They've got aspirations. They've got dreams, and they're not taking the steps to do it. And so, you can say something to your kid, but if you're then not off demonstrating and proving it, I think your kids are much more likely to see how you act as opposed to listen to what you're saying.、Uh, and so, that then the challenge becomes: okay, what would You know, if you won't do it for yourself, for the parents out there, if you won't do it for yourself,、mm-hmm. do it for your kids because they're so true.、You. So true because you know, obviously, even with adults, we lead by action. You know, we we are the example of what young people、um, look up to, and then when they see, especially their parents, what they do. Do you incorporate your son in a lot of what you do in your business? Only what he wants. You know, I think like the the best part about my parents is. They always gave us the freedom to do whatever we wanted to go chase down. There were there was expectations that we would do something, but not expectations to、mm-hmm. do something specific, right? It's、so、like we had to go, we had to go chase down goals and learn and improve. But all three of us, I have two sisters, went to go do different crazy things.、Um, and so with my son, people ask me, "Would the, you expect him to be an entrepreneur?" It's like, no. Right. What, is, what does he want to do? Right now, he's doing. His, you know he's he's、uh, turning thirteen in a couple weeks, and just looking at the date,、uh, turning thirteen. So I'm gonna have a teenager soon, and he's in his his、mm. big things are acting and、nice. Minecraft. And we had some entrepreneur stuff, like we had him do、mm-hmm. uh, lemonade stand, and、uh, went to my dance studio, and he was selling lemonade outside there. And maybe maybe entrepreneurship comes back in some way.、Um, For making videos, sometimes he wants to be a part of it. Sometimes he doesn't. So you know, it's like you basically make it. What are you interested in? Because when you when you care about something, you're、mm-hmm. much more likely to learn. And so he loves he loves acting and he loves Minecraft. So on our on our last、um, school break, I took him to California and we went to Hollywood. And we you know I don't care about、mm-hmm. Hollywood, but we we went to Hollywood to show him the Hollywood Walk of Fame and to take him through the highlight was the Universal Studios kind of behind the scenes studio tour because at least right now that's what he's into.、Mm-hmm. You know he's thirteen. 
don't have to have him know what he wants. How to do you introduce new things to him? Right. Cause we see a lot of young people who are saying, you know, I don't want to do that because I don't like it yet. Yeah, they've never actually tried it. Right. So how do you feel that it's a good way to introduce something new because you wouldn't necessarily know about it or not had their parent not or an adult not introduced it to them? I think kids are being exposed to way more new things than what we as parents. That's true. Know. You know, like just, they, just from what they watch on YouTube. You know, they're exposed to, I'm asking my son and my nieces and nephews for like new things to do, right? What new videos are you watching? What new music should I listen to? What new things are trending? I'm asking them for what's new as opposed to me mm -hmm. teaching them what's new. Um, I think the key thing is, is listening and being involved in their lives and the things that they care about as opposed to the things that mm -hmm. we might want them to care about. So instead of forcing my son to go learn piano or trumpet or something um he he really cares about nice. minecraft he got into it and so i joined him on minecraft <laughs> you know I, I suck at minecraft i i i don't i didn't know the first time i played minecraft i dug myself into a hole and couldn't figure out how to get <gasps> out like this game is stupid <laughs> but but i i learned and i got better and i improved and and there's a lot of creativity in Minecraft that if I didn't know what it was, it's easy to judge it as just a waste of time or another video game or something. And so because he's interested in it, we spend time like it's hard, you know, kids don't want to just sit down and talk about their life. I like, guess at least when you're 13 years old, 12 years old, <laughs> right? Maybe when they're older, we'll see. But they don't want to just sit down and, and when you ask them, hey, mm. how was your day? Fine. Yeah, you do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And so how do you have conversations and how do you, how do you lead them and how do you guide them and mentor them? I think it's through shared mm -hmm. activities, shared experiences. So if you want to show bouncing back after failure, you know, if I'm, if I'm playing Minecraft and I got my full netherite gear, which is hard to get, and then I die and I lose all of it, right? And I'm starting over, then what happens? Do I rage quit? <laughs> do I yell at my computer? Do I blame the creeper that blew me up, right? Or is that okay? That sucks. Yeah. <sighs> Deep breath. We're starting over, right? And like it, that is demonstrating the life lessons. Mm -hmm. I think you could teach Absolutely. life lessons through anything. And if they actually care about that thing, then now I'm demonstrating how to be mm -hmm. an adult, I guess, uh, as opposed to having to be through the things that I learned through. So I don't have to teach through entrepreneurship or through books or through piano, mm -hmm. teach it through the things that they actually care about. Um, we're looking at, uh, uh, trying to do one of the, one of the things that I loved about my mom is every year she took one of the three of us to something that we cared about. And so when she took me, it was to Dunedin, Florida, to go to spring training, Toronto Blue Jays, nice. uh, cause you get to, you get to meet the players in the parking lot and see them, you know, I love baseball and she kind of cared about baseball, but it wasn't really her thing it was my thing. So we're looking at how do we do that for um, for my son, but also for my nieces and nephews, they, they lost their mom a year and a half ago. And, uh, you know, my wife has kind of become the pseudo mom. And so they're right. a lot more than just nieces and nephews now. Um, and so we're looking at what's one thing that, that I could take them to every year and just be about them. So my niece just turned 16 yeah. and she loves anime. I know Perfect. nothing about anime, like I zero about anime. But but I'm researching, like, when are the anime conferences mm -hmm. and conventions coming up that there's one coming up in L.A. and I'm going to talk to her this weekend and, and maybe that becomes a thing that I take her to. And let's go spend three days in L.A. at the anime conference and mm -hmm. uh, and I'll get into it. You know, I, I, maybe I'm dressing up. Maybe I'm standing in line waiting to do a selfie <laughs> with, like, whoever famous person is. And, and it's not mm -hmm. about me. It's about the experience with her. And on that you know, trying to sit down and talk to her about life is, is challenging. But when you experience a trip together yeah. and we're spending three days, it's just, just me and her for three days doing something she cares about. There'll be lots of opportunities for connection um, and understanding mm -hmm. and listening and life lessons inside of that. For sure. Um, for sure. So, yeah, it's like, it, like actually caring and being interested in the things that they're interested in as opposed to the things mm -hmm. that you so want true. to teach them. I love that. So you, you, 
like I mentioned before, you had said that you you were slow. You know, you found it difficult a little bit. School. You went to three different schools. Um, you had trouble making friends from time to time, and you weren't getting the extra attention that you needed. A lot of times, um, there's a lot of young people today that feel that way, and so a lot of teachers, and I have been one that included, had said, you know, well, you know, they just have difficulty learning. However, we know from you, Jim Quick, many other people, young kids, it was just the way that they were learning that was difficult for them. What do you think is a good way for teachers, education, instruction to happen today that what you think would have made a difference if it was a little bit different when you were in school? Well, one, I had a undiagnosed mm. hearing problem. Um, and it led me to, like, I would sit under my desk wow. and pl- during school. Like, the teacher would be teaching something, and I, I, mm-hmm. you know, I, don't, I don't remember this anymore, but, like, this is what my parents would, I would sit under the desk at school. Instead of sitting in my chair, I would sit under the desk at school and, and not pay attention. And they thought I was, like, ignoring them or a bad student. And really, like, I just couldn't hear anything. And so instead of sitting there feeling dumb, I try to do something on my own. Um, I think that is a challenge in that teachers have so mm-hmm. many kids in a classroom and to spend individual time with everybody becomes, you know, challenging, but it's, you know, on the parents too, then internet didn't exist when, when that was me, right. you know, it, however old now, now you can. Um, so maybe they have actually something physically wrong or emotionally wrong or something going on at home that, it's not actually a learning problem. It's just right. they're stressed out or they have a physical problem that, you know, needs to be solved. Um, the second would be, and I mean, again, just for that, it's like creating a safe space and taking the time mm-hmm. to actually care. Like I tell the story of Madame Farr, who was my teacher, um, mentor, uh, in my last year of high school. And I went from being a B and C student to a straight 90s student after meeting her once a week, um, I was the same person, you know, it was just like that yeah. extra support and, and belief and having somebody to help me was great. Um, and then second is just understanding how you learn. So I'm auditory is the worst way for me. Uh, I, I like to mm-hmm. learn by seeing something and I like to learn with having somebody kind of guide me. And so my whole history of feeling like a dummy and stupid and can't learn was really, Oh, I just can't learn that way. I need to have a, I need to have a guide, and when I have a guide and I can actually see it, right? I'm actually a great learner. <laughs> but I didn't understand that until I was like in my twenties. So you know, that's uh, if we mm-hmm. can learn that earlier, uh, I think it, it'd be a great gift that we yeah. can give. Uh, I agree with you in that sense. I think that that's one of the biggest um, issues today with education, and you know, yes, there's a lot of different kids in the in the class, but you know, it's still the system itself is still that one track system um, that only works for one third of kids. And so, um, so yeah, it's interesting to hear that because it's really just an alteration of how the materials presented or how you learn that would have made such a big difference. Now going to piggyback on your, you were assigned Madam Farr, Miss, Miss Farr, Madam Farr, and she was your mentor in grade 12, right? And she made you believe in yourself. You were just like, oh my gosh, like you said you had got straight A's and, and you, it made all the difference. Why do you think, like, what do you, not why, what do you think would have happened had you been assigned a mentor in grade nine? Yeah, it would have made all the difference in the world. And, and um, I, I, I think when I, I, I moved between Madame Farr and Mrs. Farr because her, we actually, I called her Madame Farr, but most people don't understand what was that Was she means. a French so teacher? We try to say Mrs. Farr okay. sometimes. But yeah, yeah, she was my French teacher. Uh, and I went to a French immersion school. That was the third school that I went, the second school that I went to before transferring to my, my other, my final school for high school. And um, I was just way ahead in French because mm. I went to French immersion and now I went to yeah. regular school and <laughs> French was easy. So I was in class with people who were like three years my age in, in roasting them on mm-hmm. 
on all the tests and exams. And it was super easy, not because I was smart, but just because I was in such an intensive program that this was easy stuff that they were learning. So I built a little bit of a bond with her because she was my teacher there. And I think she felt bad for me being kind of picked on because I'm with people who are two, three years older than me and I'm destroying them, but I'm the only one in the class who's that young and had no friends. And so she took a liking to me, I guess. And I'm grateful that my school had that program. Uh, they, they paired the graduating students with uh, a teacher. And the, the idea was that you would meet once a week. Mm-hmm. It was a teacher mentorship program. Almost. Yeah, like you said kidding. that. Like, that's crazy. Um, I mean, I think it's a combination of like the students maybe didn't want to meet the teachers and the teachers weren't weren't pushing it because they probably had a million other things to do, coaching classes, uh, you know, clubs and marking and all that. Um, maybe I was too, you know, it's like, okay, this, this, this is what we do. <laughs> I didn't ask enough questions or, or judge it. It's like, okay, well, I guess I'm meeting, I'm meeting her. And I got assigned her, which is great. Because maybe she picked me. I don't even know. It's probably actually, if I think back of like, students picking kids, she, she would probably have picked me. Um, it's not some random assignment, but um, yeah. And, and I mean, I had already graduated. I had already finished all the highest level French classes by that point. I wasn't even taking French anymore because uh, I already finished grade 12 mm-hmm. French, like in grade 10. Um, so she wasn't helping me with school. She wasn't helping me with the content of the material, you know, meeting her every week, I'd meet her once a week in the morning before class started. And she would just ask me, about how things was going and um it just felt great and and i had my parents who always inject me with belief too but for whatever reason like being in the environment having having a teacher who kind of knew what i was going through really helped so if i had that at grade nine yeah i mean what what a difference it would have made i don't know how we you know obviously the more customized you can make it and the more belief you can inject in the students the better results are going to get I don't have the answer for how do you do that mm-hmm. at scale? Well, it's interesting because because not- like statistics mm-hmm. show that 75% of students of students who are mentored actually go on to graduate college or university. Um, I, you don't you don't exactly quote me on that right now because I don't remember I would I was researching this last summer and like we there's so much importance on mentoring and mentoring programs yet there are there are not a lot in most schools um or they wait until it's they make it optional or they wait until it's you know high school or 12th grade let's get you know in the the mentoring part of that so um i just i feel that mentoring is such an important part of of helping young people and youth today, but there's very limited to, to that, uh, that, that exists right now. So, um, if you could, you know, as you were not making friends, if there's a young person today who's doing the same thing with you right now, like feeling the same, didn't have a lot, doesn't have a lot of friends or feeling, left out or struggling in school, what, what, what do you say to them? It's almost like, like well, it'd be like talking to your younger self, right? So what, what would you say to them? What I would say to them would be more just listening. Like mm-hmm. I think just being here, you know, more than anything else, more than yeah. like they need a friend. So just be their friend. Ask them, mm-hmm. Hey, what do you want to do today? Play Minecraft. Cool. I wouldn't judge them and say, go do this. Like, let, okay, let, let's, let's go play Minecraft together. Let's go to the anime conference together or whatever. You know, let, do something to just listen and be with them. It's going to go a lot further than telling them, well, you should mm-hmm. do X. Um, what I would be looking for then is that how, do, how can they find community through the thing that they love? So how do they, if it's a Minecraft club if it's a volleyball club you know we're looking to get in some of our you know it's a great example my nephew uh wants to join volleyball you know he was he was on youtube watching volleyball tournaments and stuff he's now obsessed with the volleyball like how did that happen i didn't tell him volleyball nobody told him volleyball he just found the video on volleyball now we could so now we're looking at how do we get into a volleyball program like what's the closest volleyball when does the season start how do we get him in 
uh, how do we practice? Am I going to now be <laughs> serving? <like laughs> Playing, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like I, I used to play volleyball yeah. just in like gym class, but I'm not a volleyball expert. But all of a sudden now, we're you know maybe we get into volleyball, and maybe he, maybe in three months he doesn't care about it anymore, and now he cares about badminton mm-hmm. or he cares about something completely different. Cool. Like I think that's that's part of the experience, um, and so doing it with them, but then encouraging them to be a part of something that they can. And everything that is done solo can be done in groups. Like volleyball requires it, it is a team sport but um minecraft you, you can join servers you can play with friends one of the things that really helped him was was um doing minecraft and valorant and being on like he went from being really shy and introverted to then doing voice comms where you're mm-hmm. you're on a call with the people who are on your team and building friendships and learning how to communicate and learning how to talk to people through the thing that he cares about instead of forcing him into right. band class or something yeah. that he doesn't actually, actually my, like. Minecraft and, and, and Fortnite and all that, because you could talk on there with them. You know, it was great for my like English language learners because they would have to speak in English because most of them that are there on there and want to play with speak English. So they had to, they, it was, it was great. I was like, how'd you, where are you practicing? They're like, yeah, Minecraft, Fortnite. I'm like, Oh, good for you. <laughs> it was great. Well, I, I, yeah, because it's the thing they care about. Like Tim Ferriss, who wrote the Far Work Week, had a great example. We were talking about when he's trying to learn uh, a new language. He really loves martial arts and wrestling and you know, physical contact kind of sports, and so he'll join those groups and pick up those books around th- that mm-hmm. style. So if he's trying to learn Chinese, he'll learn whatever the martial art is in China and, and try to pick that up. And it'll force him to learn the language because he cares about the thing, as opposed to picking up. Uh, just mm-hmm. a textbook on the words. So Absolutely. yeah, it's, I think it's fantastic. Like you're trying to learn English and you care about mm-hmm. Minecraft. It's actually fun. And you want to learn how, you know, how do you, how do you say, right. You know, <laughs> chop down that tree in English. Now, you, now you're, lo- you're actually curious about it and you research it and you learn it so you can apply it into your life. Um, and that's where I think we get a lot of things wrong is we, we tend to judge uh, the actions. It, if you look at a parent's, and it's mm-hmm. out of love for the most part, right? It's just we they want you to succeed. But um, a lot of it, I think, in a, in a 2022 environment is misguided because the opportunities available to somebody who's, even me, I'm 42. The opportunities available to me at 42 compared to my parents at 42, right. it's just a completely different world. Like you can make more money playing Minecraft now and making videos and winning tournaments than you can being so a lawyer. true. So true on that one. Um, last question. Okay. And so I really want you to, if you had to paint a picture in your mind, what does the ideal school or education look like? I've struggled with this one. I don't have an answer. I haven't spent a huge amount of time like really think thinking it. So I, I would almost flip the question. Like, I'm curious what you think, and maybe you can add that at the end. Um, I think, I think mentorship definitely plays a bigger role. I don't know how to scale it. I don't know if it requires having more people coming in, more, more parent volunteers, more, I think less just here's what you have to learn. Like most of the stuff we learn is, mm-hmm. is forgotten. Most of the stuff that you pick up is really just memorization to pass the test. And so it's not really training us to learn things that, that matter. And I think most, I, I struggle with this with, with my son yep. and my nieces and nephews, where it's like, this is, this is useless. Right. Like, I'm never going to use this, right? Why am I studying this? Yeah. Like, You're right. <laughs> I got nothing. It is useless. I don't use any of this. And I like the chance of you actually mm-hmm. playing this is pretty much zero, but it, it's good building the discipline and the structure. Uh, Absolutely. So go do it. <laughs> but it's not as strong, not as strong a message. Um, but yeah, definitely trying to figure out ways to teach, teach kids how to learn. I think it's yeah. the most important than teaching them what to learn, like how to learn versus what to learn is, is huge. Um, people can learn. Bill Gates had this great quote, which I've been playing with, um, and I'm going to kind of mess it up word for word, but the idea was you can learn a lot more when you're in community than trying to do it on your own. So even if college or university or the school system is not uh, structured very well, the fact that you're doing it together really increases your ability to follow through, really drives up your your likelihood of following through. 
which if I look at movement makers, it's what I'm trying to do is that there's no set curriculum. Yeah. It's like, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you, what do you want me to talk about? Like, what's the theme for this, this session? Cause I want to make content and, and have discussions on what you guys care about the most. And it's never a cust- It's never a photocopy mm-hmm. of what was two weeks ago or a month ago or two months ago. It's always like the latest of what I'm working on, but then the collaboration and connection between you guys as well, I think is, yeah. I think is important. Um, I, I don't know that we even need, like just thinking out loud now, brainstorming while you're here. Like the fact that we even put people in groups based only oh, on absolutely. age is probably ridiculous. Absolutely. Because you have different levels, right? Your kids are at different levels. They could be at one level of math or a different level at something else. And so, you know, okay, you're in 11th grade or 10th grade simply because you're, you know, this age, like it's almost, it's almost absurd. So, um, yeah. And, and different interests, like people care about, I, honestly, I think, I think if you look at the club system and mm-hmm. different schools that have different clubs, you, if you look at life skills and actual value, kids probably, I'm going out on a, on a, uh, on a limb on this one, but I would, I would guess that kids get more value out of the clubs than mm-hmm. they do out of the actual classes. So if I go to a chess club and everybody there cares a lot about chess and it's all sorts of ages because it's the entire school, but it's only the 80 people who care about chess. And I'm learning and I'm making connections and friendships and strategies. And I'm, I'm, I'm competing, but also playing with some of the people who are um, at similar levels to me, even if there are different age groups. I think, I think that's probably the highest value. And so how do you replicate that out? Mm-hmm. And how do you create curriculum? It's no, not even it's curriculum. Not. How do you create? It's you know, I don't know what alternative schools are doing, but. Um, and then how do you have mentors come in who actually right. are living their life? You know, like most guidance counselors don't like their own life. And so they're, so they're now giving guidance to other kids so, and how they should live their life. Um, so I do a lot more community. Yeah. I do a lot more involvement. I do a lot more asking people to come in and speak. I do a lot more customization. I do a lot more mixing of, um, of interests and age groups, um, a lot more action as opposed to studying. Like, yep. Let's go out and build something, make something. Don't even in my even my fourth year university course on entrepreneurship. It was just about writing the business plan, and I was already running mm-hmm. my business at the time. Like go go and create a company, go do something, go go instead of just studying in a textbook, right? But all of that requires mm-hmm. well, a completely different way of thinking about education. Um, but but I don't know how you do that at scale without it costing a thousand times more. I'm sure there are ways. I'm figuring out um, the scale part. That's why we However, need people like you the, to, uh, everything else that you said, like for my online school that I, that I have, like it's, that's exactly what it is. Like, you know, kids are mixed in with each other because why does it have to, to be just one level grade level or another level? You know, if I'm having all the kids, you know, read, uh, built to serve, then why do they have to be in a different classroom to rebuild to serve and to, you know, then have that discussion around it and work together to do a project around it. Right. And so when you, when you think about it, it's about, you know, taking those, doing a podcast about like, you know, or having like one of my, one of my students, she, um, had to interview the guy that shot Archduke Francis Ferdinand. And she loves to do animation. So she was able to do an animation cartoon of her, because she doesn't like to be on, she has, her herself doesn't like to be on camera, an animation of her introducing him, but she had to research the theory and why he did it and all that stuff. So her questions had to be based on that and his answers had to be based on it. But she was able to do it in the form of a cartoon, which was pretty cool. <laughs> That was what high school. She was in 10th grade. When she, no, let's see. Yeah, she was in 10th grade when she did that. So pretty cool. I think that's a killer age. I, I think that's a great, I think, you know, what? to add on to that then, I would, I think you need strong ties into the community to then give people mm-hmm. internship programs yeah. around the things that they care about. Because if you if you take this girl and she cares about animation and then she goes and does like, we're going to say, here's what I would love to say. is like, hey, ignore French, ignore music class, ignore calculus, 
ignore history mm-hmm. unless it's like she loves history and Archduke Ferdinand. Like ignore all the stuff that you don't care about. But you still yeah. have to, this is basically what my parents did for me. It's like ignore all the stuff you don't care about, but you have to you have to spend time on something that you do care about. And it's that push to go and study and learn and be great at the thing that you do care about. And so if it's animation for her, then she's going to graduate high school being kick-ass at animation in like zero at everything else, which Mm -hmm. how do we set her up to have success in life, which would be, let's get her some kind of opportunity either to start her own business in animation or intern at an animation company who, when they hire her, will not care about her French mark or her trumpet mark or like all they care about is can she do the job and so if you're gonna go that um extreme in the curriculum or like lack of yeah. curriculum customized curriculum then then what's the next tie-in so that they're not left we're given in the next step so that they're not they don't feel screwed that though well, that was a fun four years but now i can't even get into the university of my choice because right. i didn't even well the idea those. is to get them while they're in high school that internship and so that then for especially with the the low income people so that they don't have to not everybody can go to college or university or afford it so then they can get jobs right out of high school because they have a specialization in a certain area yeah honestly it might even be make it might even make sense to go to go category by category you know it's like if you look at how did, how did facebook blow up well they were only for mm-hmm. um, university campuses at the beginning and it's how a lot of companies blow up is they start with one thing and then they get great mm-hmm. at that and then they expand, 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 expand. So how do you build the animation school or the you know, acting school or the entrepreneur school or the writing school or the something and you focus on getting great at that and in helping people build projects around those interests and then getting them opportunities so that they're making money in, and they're set up for their career. And then add another layer and another layer, another right? Layer, as opposed to like trying to do everything mm-hmm. all at once. Yeah, it's probably how I'd approach it. That's great. Well, yeah, like I would do, I would do entrepreneurship for sure. You know, it's just how do you? So how? Do, what's an entrepreneurship school look like? Well, we're going to start businesses together, and then I'd be having a, I would have a board of a board of advisors for the school, and the job for there is to try to get the kids who are making right. products deals. You know, go, go get them so that they can actually build their business when they. I'm so excited that you said that money. because you're part of my mastermind, the entrepreneur mastermind that I started for this coming school year. You're one of the weeks, and I use your stuff all the time. I can make curriculum out of your stuff forever because that's what that's just so much for these young kids to do. So I'm working on it little by little, secondary students. So. You're going to be known very well in Uganda as well this coming year. We have 50 kids in Uganda that we're sponsoring, so it's exciting. I love it. It's a huge problem. It's not one that I've spent a crazy amount of time thinking on because I'm, I'm focused mm-hmm. more on kind of the entrepreneurs out there. But um, I love it. I love being a part of it. I love that you're taking it on. It's, it's one of the you know, top 10 problems in the world, and if you fix that, you're going to fix a whole lot of a so lot of exciting. other things along. Well, we went way over, and I'm very excited that we did. So I'm just super grateful to you, and very blessed to have you in my life. Thank you, Evan. Yeah. Christy Raju in the house. Appreciate you, Christy. Thank Believe. you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you soon. If you want to see another awesome one-on-one I did with an entrepreneur just like you, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there you're making the free stuff at scale to hit a lot of people. And then the people who do have money to take it deeper with you are the ones who are gonna pay you to do your thing.